Hello my friends and welcome to Flutter News. Today's topics are Flutter, a spring update 2020, the introduction of Google Fonts 101 and also how we can embed Flutter CodePen projects inside each other. So without further ado, let's get started. My first topic today is how we can embed code pens inside of code pens and why this is useful. Mariano Sorilla created a Medium article, you will find the link down in the video description below, where he created a code pen and embedded that code pen in itself. So he called that Flutter Inception. It is a very nice article that I can highly recommend. And he created a code pen for us where he demonstrates because what he created is a WhatsApp clone that is living inside of another application inside of code pen where he shows the iPhone inside. So you can create really nice uh, previews for an existing app. Last week, Tim Sneath and Patrick Sosinski released the Flutter Spring Update 2020. He talked in his article about how Flutter developed 2 million users and is counting up still. He talked about the momentum of Flutter, where we have the, uh, some very interesting statistics. For example, on which platform we are working on, uh, or Flutter developers working on, in which company sizes the people are working in, and also what are the top five territories, for example, India, China, United States, EU, and Brazil, and also other very interesting topics. For example, which are the most popular framework packages used by Flutter apps, where we can see like HTTP, shared preferences, internationalization, Meta, Path Provider, and Pedantic. Also, he introduced us the most popular third-party packages in Flutter, which are Provider, RxDart, Cached Network Images, SQL Flight, Font Awesome, and Flutter Launcher icons. In the next part, he's talking about Flutter in Enterprise. Here he uh, gives us an introduction into Nubank, one of the biggest digital banks outside of Asia. And he explains us that they will use or that they use Flutter mainly and that they love it. So here is also the video for them. So if you are interested, you find the link down in the video description below and on the top on the video box. He is also explaining that they cooperate with Sync Fusion. Sync Fusion creates high quality Flutter components that enterprise customer can buy in to use. And what is very special about them is that they are working in Android, iOS and web out of the box and they created a web based preview that we can see here. Also here you can find a link down in the video description below. Then he talks about the update and release cycle process. And it is very interesting because um, the Flutter framework is quite new still with its 18 months of um, release. And what you can see is he is talking about a lack of clarity for the releases and where they build on and also a lack of testing for specific branches. Also, he is talking about that they align now Dart and Flutter release cycles together. So that means if you are on a beta channel for Flutter, you are probably also on a beta channel for Dart. He is also telling us that um, if you are creating a Flutter app in stable channel, he encouraged us to bring it also to beta just to check if there are any issues and post them inside of the GitHub repository. Additionally, he explains us that there are, will be versioning changes so if you're following along the Flutter releases Twitter uh, channel, you will have already seen that this new versioning is already in place. Also, he is telling us once more about CodePen support. That I created there a video that you will find uh, on top on the uh, info box. And as you can see, there are already a lot of different code pens on the way that you can see and also find out different parts. And I highly recommend to take a look into them. Mayam Hasnani, product owner and co-founder of Table Manners Aside, published at the 29th of April um, an article for the Flutter web support updates. She gives us a quick note that the current Flutter release getting postponed for one week because there is a uh, release blocking bug at the moment. 
So the current bug is that the app crashes when it's getting uploaded to the App Store. So if you want, you can follow along the issue that is created in GitHub repository and take a look what exactly happens there and maybe help them to solve that problem. Additionally, she describes a success story from a company called MStar that is working with Flutter Web only to create these web stories for marketing purposes. Also, she describes uh, things that are new like PWA support and also uh, different plugins that you can use now thanks to the community in Flutter Web. For example, audio player, connectivity, Cloud Firestore, where I created already a video for that. You will find it on top in the info box and also Cloud Functions. Additionally, she describes the web debugging and expression evaluation inside of uh, that will give our IDEs more power, for example, Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ. So also there is a huge progress how you can set breakpoints inside of your web and can debug the whole thing and the current priorities for testing, quality and performance, and also some future improvements that they want to bring into the Flutter web support. Also, she describes some known issues. And at the end, she has the call to action where she asks every one of us to help and support the Flutter web wherever we can. Also for this, you find all the necessary links down in the video description below, like the link to that article and also the link to the other important things. news that I want to share with you is the introduction into Google Fonts for Flutter version 1.0.0. Antonio uh, Robledo and uh, M.H. Johnson, two Google engineers that are working uh, directly on the Google Fonts package, released a new version for that, version 1.0.0, and created with the help of the great community of Flutter um, that nice little package and came to that version. They explain in their article how you can implement the Google Fonts, how you can use them in the new version. And also he explains something like the license registry that is very important for the usage of Google Fonts. So if you have any problems with that, feel free to check out the GitHub repository. You will find the link down in the video description below or check out the video that I created where I explain how you can use the Google Fonts. All right, so that's it for this week's Flutter news. And please give this video a like Subscribe that channel, write down in the comments below what you think about the new packages and the new possibilities of Flutter and let me know your opinion about all of that. Thank you so much for joining me today and enjoy the rest of your week. See ya guys!